Are your high-tech running shoes helping you or hurting you? Carbon-plated running shoes are everywhere, from elite marathons to local 5Ks, but are they slightly increasing your risk of injury? I'm Dr. Ray Peralta, physical therapist, run coach, exercise physiologist, and over the past 10 years, I've helped hundreds of runners hit PRs, recover from injuries, and run pain-free. And I've seen firsthand what happens when we blindly chase performance over smart training, right? We get excited like, oh my God, I need these super shoes. I got to go run in them. Well, um, this video, I'm going to break down it, what you really need to know about carbon plated running shoes, the pros, the hidden risk, and how to use them without breaking down your body. We're going to cover the performance science behind carbon plated running shoes, the types of injuries they're linked to, and how to protect your body while still reaping the benefits. So carbon plated running shoes, like what I'm holding right here, boom, are shown to improve your running economy by an average of 2.5%, with some studies going up to as high as like 9% gains for certain runners. But that boost can come to a cost, with a cost. These shoes alter your natural gait and biomechanics, like how your foot hits the ground. Oftentimes, they alter it, they alter that, right? And leading to repetitive stress, especially if you're not conditioned for them. Even elite runners like Paula Radcliffe have spoken out after races where the shoe left her in pain. And if you want to run smarter and not just harder, check out my free training link in the description. So what are the types of injuries linked to carbon plated running shoes? Well, glad you asked. One is navicular stress fracture. This is a fracture of the midfoot of the foot. So essentially, if we're looking, this is a left side, uh, left foot for your left shoe. The navicular bones kind of located in that midfoot area. And from that stiff carbon plate, you can see this shoe is not bending. I have to really put a a lot of force to bend it. So it's very stiff. It's going to put a lot of stress through that navicular bone, increasing that loading rate on the bone and causing a navicular bone stress fracture. The other type of stress fracture is at the metatarsals. These are metatarsals are part of the uh, the toes, essentially your metatarsals, your toes. So like a toe fracture, especially the second, the second and third toe are metatarsal during toe off. Toe off so when your foot leaves the ground. So as your foot hits the ground, boom, 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 toe off is that last part. It's a triple extension. And that toe off with that stiff, again, rigid carbon plate is going to put a lot of force through the toes. Uh, the third type of injury is a tibial stress fracture um, by the repetitive transmission through the shin. So let's say this is my shin. As the foot's hitting the ground, doing initial contact, whether you're a rear foot or midfoot striker, still it's a lot of force going through the tibia causing tibial stress fracture. Next type of injury will be Achilles tendonitis. Boom. So the tendon behind that, that Achilles tendon that goes to your attaches to your heel, the back of the ankle to the foot. Due to the increased ankle work, right, there's a lot of increased ankle plantar flexion work. Plantar flexion was the foot points downwards. A lot of stress in the Achilles tendon, also potential overuse injury there. Then plantar fasciitis, right, pain on the bottom of the foot. That's because, you the, again, increased stiffness. More pressure on the met heads, the toes connecting to the plantar fascia can strain the fascia. And then patellar tendinopathy. So if we, now we go upstream to the knee, the knee joint, as you're running, the stiff mechanics shift more force to the knee, and now you got patellar tendon problems. So who's more at risk? Runners with prior stress fractures, right? Female runners due to bone density and loading mechanics. So with the prior stress fracture, it means you had a prior history of stress fracture before. Maybe you had a tibial or shin stress fracture, shin splints, and then, or maybe you had a toe or foot, for, midfoot stress fracture, and now you go with these carbon plated running shoes, you're now you're at risk for an, a few, another stress fracture. And then uh, women runners, female runners, due to, it tends to have lower bone density, their bones are not as strong, unfortunately. And then the loading mechanics, the strain on the body can also put them at risk for injury. And also, athletes who log you know, high miles, we're looking at 60, 70, 80, 90 plus miles a week, usually people training for a marathon, right? These 60 plus miles a week marathoners who are doing carbon plated runnings with high mileage are also at risk for injury. And anyone who transitioned to the carbon shoes without adapting gradually is also at risk for injury. So how do you prevent this, right? You're like, okay, that sounds nice. I want to prevent this. I still want to use these super shoes. What you want to do is you want to alternate your super shoe with your traditional running shoe, right? Don't go all into the super shoe. Make sure you're alternating. Maybe just use a super shoe on certain speed days and the rest of your week, you're doing your traditional running shoe, right? Shoe, uh, choose a shoe model because every brand and model is going to be, even though they're super shoes, they're going to feel different and have different uh, models. That's going to be better for your foot type, your mechanics, 
right? A stiffness to cushion ratio, because it does have cushion, but also has stiffness. And you could experiment to what the stiffness cushion ratio is better for you. You know, get fitted at a running specialty shoe store, try it out, see which one's comfortable for you. Try out multiple models, right? Don't just go for the first one you see, just because it's a Nike or whatever brand you like. Uh, strengthen your feet, right? Rock, walk barefoot, train your calves, do toe yoga. Uh, so strength, strong feet is also going to help protect you. Um, it's not going to be a hundred percent guarantee, but at least decrease your risk of injury. Uh, focus on gait preparation, especially glute and core activation drills. A lot of times people have a hard time activating glutes. So focus on working on that. Monitor early signs of pain, right? If you went for a run using the carbon plate shoes, even if you didn't, you did traditional shoes, any you notice pain that lasts for more than like two or three days, don't ignore it, right? Uh, try to address it. Don't like, oh, I'm just going to run the, my next workout on top of the pain. I'm just going to push through the pain. No, if the pain is persisting, even when walking is causing you to limp, go to a medical professional, right? Don't be stubborn, right? Catch it early and you can prevent from the injury from like really being a big issue, right? Work with like a physical therapist, someone who understands runners, right? And you can find, usually find these people in your area. And if not, check online. And I'm also a physical therapist, works with runners online. Just uh, check out, reach out if you need some help. Uh, so when I first ran, uh, these are my Nike vapor flies, I felt fast, so no doubt. But my Achilles tendons both were throbbing. My arches wrecked for days. But luckily, I was smart enough to back off and return to my regular trainers for daily runs. Even though performance gains to, uh, aren't worth their injuries long term, right? They take you out for months, so especially if you get a severe enough injury. So lesson, respect the shoe and your body. And here's a quote I love. Super shoes stop your feet from moving. They make you faster, but eventually they make you weaker. That's why you need to train your feet to stay strong outside the shoe, right? I'm a big fan of barefoot training, barefoot walking, uh, toe exercise, um, calf raises, toe raises, all sorts of things to strengthen your lower body and feet. So super shoes can help you PR, but they're not magic and they're not for every day. If you want to run fast and stay healthy, grab my free training guide in the description. Learn how to train smarter and build a resilient runner's body that doesn't break down, carbon plate or not. Check the link below.